So Jim, test indicators. I love them. I think they're really cool. This one happens to be a 5 tenths per line. This guy is a tenth indicator, 1 tenth per line. This is my favorite. I really love this guy. I've had these guys for many, many years. They've been sitting in storage. But anyway, there's some interesting things that I'd like to share with you. If you have an indicator point, for example, that wears out over a period of time, it has a flat spot on it, which we'll show you here, give you an idea what it looks like. That can give you a false reading because there's a flat on it. Obviously, if you're on one end of the flat or one at the other end of the flat, you're going to get a different reading. So it's important that every now and again you take a look at that indicator stem and make sure that there's not a flat on it. So the other thing is that I want to show you the difference in the angle that you happen to have your indicator on and what that really means. If the indicator, and we're going to do two tests here. I'm going to show you one with the indicator stem in the proper position, which is almost horizontal. And I have two gauge blocks here. There are thousands apart. It doesn't make any difference what they are, but there are thousands apart. So here we have zero on that one, and here we have plus a thousandths on, or a correction, minus the thousandths on that one. So there we have zero, there we have minus one, because those gauge blocks are a thousandths apart. But what happens if we change the angle of the point? Let's say that for whatever reason, I don't know why we'd want to do that, but let's say we have that indicator point something like that. Now, what's going to happen there? Well. Let's go down and read it again and see what happens. So if I go down here and I bring it down to so and I get it to zero. And by the way, I'm not a proponent of that, that everything has to be on zero. It's a comparative test. It doesn't make any difference where the indicator point is as long as you know where it's at. But anyway, we'll put it on zero for the purpose of this conversation and the purpose of the video. And we're showing roughly zero there, and that is about three quarters of a turn. And here, it should show one thousandths, right? Well, check that out. It's almost a thousandths and a half. So the point here is that if the indicator stem is not parallel, you're going to get a false reading. It's going to show greater than it really is. So almost a half a thousandths difference between these two. So that's why the indicator point, when you're using it, needs to be relatively horizontal, at least to the, uh, to the base. So that's why we take a look at that periodically and make sure that we don't have it on too much of an angle. Now, here's another one. What if we decide that we need a longer indicator point because we have to get in some kind of a hole somewhere that's pretty deep and we have to check it? Well, that's going to change the, the dynamics of it as well. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's suppose that, and, and by the way, this is a 5 tenths indicator. So let's bring that over here and line it up. And this indicator point happens to have a carbide tip on it, which I really love. I love carbide tips. They, they cost a whole lot more, but believe me, they're worth every nickel. So here we have zero. Now remember, these are one thousandths apart. Look at that. It's only showing five tenths. Why is it five tenths when it's a thousandths? Because we've doubled the length of the indicator stem, which cuts the accuracy in half. So it's important to recognize that if you decide to use a different stem and it's longer, you need to be careful because the, the accuracy goes down by half because the length is twice as long. It's not made for that indicator to be read in that method. Time for lunch. Okay, lastly, what happens if you bang your indicator accidentally or you drop it on a point? Well, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to try to Put this in the camera for you, my dirty fingers and all. But there you have a bearing that was taken out of there 
that had to be replaced because it got dinged. So the use, the care and use of the indicator is really important. You need to respect it. It'll do a good job for you. And you'll love using them. I always love using indicators. It's a lot of fun. So that's the story about the indicators. And thanks for watching.